that's a great question. I, I wish I had the mind of God to, to know. Um, there were many, many girls who I went to camps and clubs and to the center with who were a lot better than me, for sure, and, and um, even humanly speaking, uh, had many more virtues and probably even prayed more than I did. And, and yet God called me. God asked me um, to be a new Mary member of Opus Dei. I, I can't really explain that, why he chose me and... and I often actually ask him, you know, why why did you choose me and why did you choose me so at such a young age? Actually, at first I, I kind of ran away. I ignored it for a while. I was very um, convinced that I was going to get married, that I was going to have many children. I had my first ten children named <laughs> and um, my honeymoon planned. And I can remember even s- sitting in Mass and telling God, um, and telling God, well, clearly you want me to get married because you've put in my heart this great desire to um, that I really liked guys, that I really wanted to be married, and that I really wanted children. And so it was over time in, in reading and in, in praying that every time I prayed to God about my calling, he made it more and more clear that he wanted me to be a numeric. So I, I can't really explain that in um, in terms of wh- how I knew, I didn't hear voices. It was kind of a grumbling of my heart of knowing every time I prayed and tried to be open to God of what he wanted, it was it became increasingly clear to me that it was to be a numeric. I never thought about being a nun. That never came up in my prayer. It never came up to me as a question. Uh, I always knew that God wanted me to be in the middle of the world. I had my professional plans. And then over time, he showed me that it really was to be a numeric. And I've, I could say that I know that I, or I have no doubt that I would be happy, would have been happy but getting married, having my own family. But I also have no doubt that I'm happiest in this world doing what God wanted, which was to be a numeric. The first saying yes to God is just the beginning. The perseverance is a totally, it's another story. It's really where the story is, that there were definitely struggles. There were definitely um you know, questions, especially in the beginning, in my mind about is this really what God wanted for me? So it was so important, in, especially in those first years, that I sought out, that I tried to find out everything I could about Opus Dei to figure out, is this really for me? And over time, I, I was even more convinced that God wanted this for me. And I think my happiness or my my joy of, of what I do has been a testament to, yes, this is what God wants for me. I can speak from my own experience that um, in trying to f- discover God's will is um, the only way is through prayer. We have to ask him. I, I needed to, I didn't know what God wanted, so I needed to talk to him to be able to hear that. And um, from scripture, we know that God, you know, he whispers. He doesn't send out an angel and, t- and um, you know, who appeared in my room to tell me what God wanted me to do. So it's through the whisper of prayer. Uh, And then also what helped me a lot was in reading, reading spiritual books, um, and in spiritual direction, kind of spiritual coaching, talking to someone else about this is what's going on in my soul, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I think God is telling me, and it's kind of um, having that coach to guide me through was very, very helpful. Does the spiritual director tell you what to do? No, a spiritual director doesn't tell tell you what to do at all. I myself now give spiritual direction to many people, and um, I know it, that spiritual direction really is about helping a person to um, to talk to God more, oftentimes um, asking them, why don't you pray about that? If this is what you're thinking, why don't you pray about it? Maybe read something and pray about it more. Um, it's really like a coach, a coach who um, gives you some ideas, but um, that it's up to you to really uh, to really exercise, to really follow through and and um, pray more. You'll hear a lot about freedom in Opus Dei because um, there's a great emphasis on freedom. And I think um, that understanding of freedom being the ability to do the good and not just doing whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like. So um, following the will of God, praying, trying to figure out what does God want of me right now? Not just in my whole life, but what does God want of me today? What does God want of me this minute? What does God want of me in an hour? Um, that takes a lot of freedom to um, 
to see, okay, this is what God wants and I want it too. That's really the, um, the freedom. Christ didn't give us uh, a bunch of rules. He gave us a person to unite ourselves to, himself. Uh, he gave us an example of how we should live. And, um, and then he gave us grace. He gave us that, that help to live that Christian life. And too often we as, as Christians, as followers, as, uh, followers of Christ, focus on what appear to be a bunch of rules instead of seeing that, um, yes, there are guidelines such as the Ten Commandments, but really that our life is about following that person of Christ. And, and in Opus Dei, that's, it's really the same thing. It's, um, you know, how can I follow that, that person and example of Christ in my own life? My circumstances are going to be different than my father's circumstances or um, a, a mother with ten kids or uh, a widow. But in, in each person's life, they have to see, well, how can I follow that example of Christ? What is God asking of me right now and, and today in this moment? I'm 28 years old now, so I was 22 when my mom passed away. Tell me what happened. It was definitely a very hard time for, for me, for my family. Um, at the same time, it, it was strangely a time of a lot of blessing and a lot of grace. Um, my mother had scleroderma. It's an autoimmune disease. It eventually affected her lungs such that her lungs became all scars, and she wasn't able to breathe very well. She was on oxygen. Eventually, her heart gave out, and I had the amazing blessing to be able to take care of her for a time. Um, I, I flew down to, to Philadelphia, near where she lived, and um, stayed with my, with my parents and took care of my mother. And it was an amazing time because it was sort of a role reversal for me as the daughter to be helping my mother get ready for bed, help her brush her teeth, do her night prayers, uh, wake up in the middle of the night when she needed a drink. That was a very special time for me. And then I also learned a great deal about suffering, about Christian suffering from my mother during those days. She was an incredible example of, um, of uniting herself to the, the cross of Christ. She would always pray for a miracle. Every day she would pray to St. Josemaria, the founder of Opus Dei, for a miracle for her to be cured. And then she'd right away pray, but thy will be done, God, thy will be done. And uh, I had the opportunity, actually, in that, that time with her to hear her prayer out loud. One day I went in, walked into the room that she was in, and I asked her what she was doing. She said that she was praying, and she had her little prayer book that she made. It was a little photo album, and she put all her prayers in and all her petitions for each child. We, I was in there, too, with what she prayed for me. Uh, she had her little picture of an angel, and uh, that she was talking to in a picture of Our Lady and a picture of the baby Jesus. And I went in and asked my mother, can I pray with you? And thinking that we were both going to sit there in silence and I was going to pray with my book and she was going to pray with hers. And she actually prayed out loud. And I sat there and I went through an entire box of Kleenex. <laughs> it was the most beautiful prayer. It was, she really just talked straight face to face with God talked to Our Lady. She asked her guardian angel to go help the guardian angel of my nephew to make sure that he ate his breakfast well. And very, very practical, but a very holy prayer. And that's really, I, I think I learned a lot that day about how to pray very personally to God. I'm involved in geriatrics and health care of the chronically ill and the terminally ill. And my mother's whole life really influenced that. My mother was a uh, a long-term patient care nurse, and when I was growing up, she would take us sometimes to the hospital with her and visit with her patients. And I, so I think from a very early age, I really had this respect for the elderly that I learned from my mother. My master's thesis in bioethics had to do with how can a person who is facing terminal illness, who is experiencing terminal illness, live a virtuous life? How can they find meaning and happiness amidst terminal illness? And that, I can definitely say, came from my experience with my mother.